How's it going everybody? It's Rosine here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to shoot flat frames. Now flat frames are a really critical and important calibration frame. They help remove gradients from your images, vignetting from your images, dust from your images and uh, uneven field illumination I believe is men mentioned. Not entirely sure what that one is. By the way they're a bit awkward to take to begin with and so you might have been t putting it off for now but the second you start adding flat frames to your workflow, you're gonna see a marked improvement in your images. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do it with DSLR and dedicated astronomy camera. And we're gonna start with the DSLR. And to follow along, all you're gonna need is an elastic band and a white t-shirt. Some of you probably can see where this is going already. So let's start with the DSLR. Now when going into shooting flat frames, there's two things that you have to be critically aware of. First of all, you need to keep the focus the same as when you shot your light frame. So they're your actual photos. If you've moved your focus ring or your focus tube from taking your light into your flat, either you need to have to be able to refocus then and there that same night, or you've lost the ability to take meaningful flat frames. Secondly, the camera rotation must stay the same. Because think about it, if you're trying to calibrate a bit of dust that was here and you've rotated your camera now down to here, when it, when it tries to calibrate that image, it's not going to remove that dust out of the frame is just going to put a lighter point down here in the image it's actually going to spoil your image so keep the rotation the same and keep the uh, focus the same camera temperature doesn't really matter and exposure time is going to be wildly different to your uh, light frames because we take them during the day or against the light source now when shooting flat frames with the dslr it couldn't be easier there's a mode on the camera that's going to make your life so straightforward and it's called aperture priority mode so that's av mode on canons we're going to set it to that, but before we do, we need to add the t-shirt to the front of the lens here, being very careful not to change the focus. What I recommend doing is actually putting some tape onto your focus ring and just holding it there. Another gotcha that got me a few times with this one, for example, the 50 millimeter camera lens here, the lens is electronic and it retracts when you turn the camera off. That changes your focus. So go into your camera settings and disable that function if you have one of these electronic focuses. If not, then just tape it down, you're, already, you're good to go. But that one's caught me out a few times. The setting is different on every camera, so just check your book for switching off the retract camera lens function on power off. So quick uh, little tip there. So I'm gonna tape this down and we're gonna put the t-shirt on the front of it. So with the t-shirt, I'm just gonna fold it twice over and then very carefully put it onto the camera lens Again, we want to be careful here, not push the lens because we're going to adjust the focus then. Just like that, I'm going to get rid of some of these stray hairs and that's ready to go. So let's swing around the back now and look at the settings I'm going to be using to take my flat frames. You may have noticed the slightly overcast day. That is on purpose. We want a nice flatly illuminated sky, point away from the sun, flatly illuminated, coming down onto the sensor Another reason for the t-shirt, it acts as a diffuser and flattens that light even more coming onto the sensor so we get a nice flat image. There's that term used three times, flat frames. They're flat frames for a reason, flatly illuminated. In terms of camera settings, we want to make sure our aperture is the same as what we shot it with and our ISO is the same as what we shot it with. If I was shooting with the 1.8, I would shoot about f3.5, so I'm going to make sure that matches, and I would shoot about ISO 800, so you would make sure ISO 800 is selected. Then going to go into live view. And can you see this image? Can you see how it's flatly illuminated? There's a bright spot in the middle, which is normal for a camera lens, and then it vignettes off to the sides. This is exactly what we're looking for. And the exposure meter down here is telling us it is completely in the middle. For a flat frame with a DSLR, you want it to be 50% illuminated, 33 to 50% illuminated. So consider minus three here is zero and plus three is 100, put it here, 50%. And then we're just gonna take a shot. And there you go, that's a flat frame. Now, if we review that image and bring up the histogram, boom, right there in the middle. Slightly off a little, but this is absolutely fine for a DSLR flat frame. And then you just fire off, I don't know, 10, 15 of them. And that is then your DSLR flats shot. See, really simple, just need the camera lens and the t-shirt and the um, aperture priority mode on the camera. And this camera is about to die now. 
Shooting flats with the telescope and the DSLR, same kind of thing, set it to AV mode, you'll see a zero where the aperture should be because it can't read the aperture, aperture of the telescope. Don't even worry about that, just put the ISO in and let the camera sort the rest out. Again, make sure you have the t-shirt the, uh, over the end of the telescope. We're gonna move on to the dedicated astronomy camera now. This is where it's slightly different. A lot of the rules are the same. We want the same camera rotation, same focus, t-shirt across the end here. And we want 33 to 50% illumination on the histogram. Now the main difference is a DSLR has ISO and it will show you a histogram and it's really straightforward. A dedicated camera, CMOS, CCD, whatever, uses ADU, analog to digital units. And that is the one that catches people out because we need to find that reading. To find that reading, we need the camera's ADC, analog to digital charge, I believe that's called. And that can be found on the camera manufacturer's website or the uh, retailer's website. This is gonna be 12 bit, 14 bit or 16 bit depth. For my camera, the ASI 071 MC Pro, it is a 14 bit camera. And what we're gonna use is that 14 bit into a slight bit of maths calculation, not too bad, don't worry about it. And that's gonna teach us our target ADU. In this recipe, I'm gonna be using astrophotography tool, but I would imagine these teachings will apply to any software that you're using. So I'm just going to shirt up the telescope. This one's a lot more straightforward because you don't have to worry about knocking the focus, not on a t not on a telescope like this. Make sure it's nice and taut with no ripples in it. And now we're going to jump into APT. In APT, there is a tool literally for this. We go to tools and it's called the CCD Flats Aid. This is where we need all this information now. And what I'm going to do is show you how to do it. So we need the bit depth of our camera. You can find this again on the retailer website, etc., like that. So for a 12 bit, what we are going to do is we're going to do, get the scientific calculator up. We want to do 12, uh, two raised to the power of 12, which gives us 4,096. This is the full analog to digital units of this 12 bit sensor. And then we want to divide that by two, 2048. So for a 12-bit sensor, we're looking for 2048 ADU. Again, for the 14-bit sensor, it's two raised to the power of 14, 16,384, divide that by two, 8,192, 8,192. And again, for the 16-bit, two, raised to the power of 16, 65,536, divide that by two, 32,798, 32, These are our target ADUs. Now, I'm not too fussy about these. You could put 8192 in, you could put 2084 in. I just put, for a 14-bit sensor, I set it to 8,000. Good enough for me, 1% either way. And I just give it the settings I want. I'm just gonna click run. And the camera's gonna start taking photos and it's going to assess the ADU. See, here we go, current ADU is that high. Now I believe APT stretches the values to 16-bit. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I've never had a problem doing it this way. So we can see it's taking a photo analyzing it and changing the exposure as necessary to reach that setting that we want, target between 7920 and 8080. There you go, now it's finished the flats at 7985, which is good enough. And it's made a plan for us with all the information in it already. And I'm just gonna make this. I'm gonna call it what it is, East Vale Flats, East Vale Flats. And I'm just gonna start that plan. I'm gonna let this take 50 of them. And then I'm gonna put the lens cap on and make a dark flat frame set with the same exposure setting, 0.16212 seconds, but it's dark frames to help calibrate out the light frames, uh, the light flat frames. So this is how you can find flat frames in APT using a dedicated astronomy camera to do your light flat frames. And then when that's done, Make the same plan with the dark flat frames, 
shove the lens cap on and you've got dark frames as well. I hope this video has been really helpful for you. Let me know down in the comments below if this has answered your questions. Hope it has. Flat frames, complete game changer as soon as you add them to your repertoire. Really makes uh, editing your photos a lot more straightforward in the end. So thanks very much for watching everybody. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.